Britt Waters from 93.9 WKYS here at the DC premiere of Barbershop. Yes, it's an all-day event. First, we were at Bus Boys and Poets. Now we're here to finally see the movie. Cedric the Entertainer, Ice Cube, Regina Hall, right here, right now. KYS, how are you? I'm good. How you doing? Good. We were just together, like, what, three hours ago at the uh, Bus Boys and Poets. So much fan love. Are you surprised to be so upset from DC? No, I mean, you know, DC has always shown me love, you know, from way back in the day, you know, when I first started, uh, you know, with NWA and then went solo. Uh, it's always been love out of DC. You know, it's kind of a Kendrick spirit. So, Barbershop the movie. Everything goes down in the barbershop. Do you still go to the barbershop? Or are you Hollywood now? <laughs> well, you know, I, I get in there every now and then, not as much as I can because, you know, I got people to come to me and do me up. I got a bar that hooks me up, you know. But, uh, you know, I love going in there every now and then, getting the flavor. You know, you got to feel the people to stay in tune. You brought Nicki Minaj onto this movie. You're working on an album. Can you and Nicki do something together? Yo, what's up to Nicki? You know, I'm always down. You know, I always got a high 16. All, All right, Nicki. High 16, for sure. Let's make that happen. Let's do it. Thank you so much, Ice Cube. Right. Cedric, Britt, hey, hey, how are you? I mean, long you time know, no see. I know, Britt. We was like at breakfast together. I know. It's like, like I'm, that. It's like I'm following you. <laughs> yeah. I'm going to get arrested yeah. for stalking, I promise. Yeah. yeah, what's happening? So this movie, you're mixing kind of controversial issues with funny. Do you think this will kind of get younger people to open their eyes to what's actually going on? Yeah, hopefully. I mean, you know, we want, we want a movie that's entertaining and at the same time, because we're talking about, you know, a subject matter. And we're really showing a father being involved with his child. We're showing the community coming to bat for, them, for themselves and the business that are in that community. Right. I mean, you know, we always have these kind of things like, you know, whenever there's an uprising, whenever there's, you know, you know, an injustice, uh, it's this joke that we tear up our own neighborhoods, you know, yet, you know, even in uh, times when kids are just going around committing murders and crimes and making the neighborhood scary, that's that's creating that same kind of peril inside our own neighborhoods and hopefully we'll make people aware that you know these guys that work in the barbershops and the local stores they come there they love their community they live there too they they claim in the block just like you except they grown people so don't you know you got to respect that and we respect one another so let's try not to have murders on the streets that bring down the property value of uh, your mama house uh, your grandmama house like you know think about it in a more you know adult contemporary term than to think about oh this dude is on my block i'm gonna murder him that's you know so hopefully we we kind of you know putting light on that and at the same time doing it in an entertaining fashion yeah you're bringing back that family aspect now the last movie was 12 years ago that's yeah. like my half my life yeah so people who haven't seen the first two can they just pick up here well, yeah, yeah. This is this movie stands alone by itself. I mean, of course, you would want to know some of the characters if you uh, had an opportunity to, you know, to, to uh, watch the other ones before. Then it'd be great. If not, though, you know, th this movie is one that can stand on its own uh, because we have a familiarity with the audience that grew up and loved the movies. You would be like, oh, it's a little backstory that you may not know, but uh, we try to cover some of those things in there. And last question: I don't know what's under your hat, but do you still go to the barbershop? Yeah, yeah, yeah. I still go to the barbershop, man. I mean, I got, yeah, yeah. I, you know, I go in St. Louis when I when I go home. I got my regular barber, and I take my son to the barbershop in L.A. It's a, it's a, it's a rites of passage. You got to take your son to the barbershop. Uh, just because it's Wednesday, I have to let you know that you are everyone in D.C.'s Woman Crush Wednesday. Welcome home. Oh, thank you. So, I, am, you know what? I'm so excited to be. I'm never here as long as I want. I always want someone to book me for, like, five things to do so I can stay longer. We will book you. We well, Let's get that on the papers now. We will book Regina Hall every day. I want to. Like, I love being home. The weather's perfect. It actually just cleared up for you. Because it was gloomy all week, but then they knew Woman Crush Wednesday Regina was dropping into D.C. <laughs> so, Barbershop the movie. Is the barbershop a place for the ladies, too? Now it is. It wasn't at first. Calvin had it on lock. But now that it's, you know, it's still Calvin's. He won't change the name. But, no, I think one of the great things about the script is that there are more salons that are like that. And when people have to make financial um, decisions, you know, partnering with, uh, with the ladies was the best thing for, for Calvin to save his shop. So, yeah, the conversations change now, though. So do you have personal experiences in barbershops? 
You know what's interesting is not a lot because my brothers didn't want me to go. So clearly they were discussing things that I shouldn't have been hearing. And now you're the one with the barbershop movie. And now I'm the one with the barbershop movie. Another question. You are a very seasoned actress in the industry. There's a lot of trend going on with people getting acting roles because they have a lot of Instagram followers. How do you feel about that? Because you did put the work in. Well, um, you know, every every career has its journey and its and its um and its longevity. You know, for me, it's not like a role. It's really to commit to the art and get better and better. And maybe for them, it was a dream to be in a movie. So I don't know. I kind of think what's for you is for you, and you gotta. I'm sure some of them have gotten it and been like, I don't like this. I've been on set for 14 hours. It's a lot. It's a lot of long hours in a, on a in a movie set. But um, you know, it's um. Now cut to if you start seeing me losing roles, then I'll be on the carpet, probably saying a different story. Then you'll be coming for them. <laughs> <laughs> and finally, how do you do it all at once? Like you do so much. You look great. You eat great. Like I want your life. <laughs> You know what? I get to really work with great people, but I was a mess this morning. Y'all should have seen me, but I have a team that kind of puts it all together. And then I, I have a big thing with, with food and diet and eating, and I've been trying to get that actually more into the community, and I'm going to be like trying to start an organization soon where we rally, really address that so that people, um, you know, our community has heart disease, and, and, and a lot of our men have blood pressure and dive, high blood pressure and they dive um strokes so and I gotta ask for the guys your last few movies we saw you get a little bit risque we saw you with that leg up in that other movie is there gonna be any of that in barbershop my legs are down <laughs> my legs are down <laughs> oh man <laughs> thank you so much Regina thank you so much. So we're ready for laughs sadly we can't see Regina Hall get naked but let's go see the movie anyway barbershop the brand new one in theaters April 15th